we'll just go ahead and and start through here and um, introduce the team. If you've jumped in, you've kind of figured who everyone is. My camera is off because I'm having internet issues, so sorry about that, but I'm Grace. I'm the architect. Uh, Doug is representing Mighty House Construction, the contractor. Um, Jay and Elizabeth are here as the homeowners, newly back in their house. Um, they just moved back. Uh, it has been a couple, not quite a couple months. Two months. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> so um, let's try to get this to move again. So why did they want to do this remodel? And uh, this started as they were in the original house um, before the uh, project was, you know, 900 something square foot house, uh, four people living in it son and daughter sharing a bedroom, um, how, you know, needing more space. So the basic things were needing an, at least another bedroom and at, another bathroom. So that was the very, very minimum of uh, the project um, and what needed to happen. And then there were other, so this is the floor plan of the existing, what was the previous house. Um, and the yellow space, the colored spaces are just where the, um, the impacted areas. So you can see sort of a living room, dining room, kitchen, kind of open plan in the front. You had two bedrooms and one little bathroom uh, in the back uh, shared by all four people. And I just want to note that there was, there's not even like a, a, a big, sink with a cabinet and everything in there. There's no cabinet in the bathroom even. So I was personally amazed that they were all peacefully living in this house, sharing these spaces, but they did recognize that they needed more space. Um, so just a reference point for where they started, uh, where we started on this. So this is a front and back of the house before the project. And um, you can see on the back side that there, it, there are no windows. There's just one little door going to this wonderful backyard. So from the front view, you can see all those tall trees in the back are actually the park beyond, behind the house. And so you, you had this wonderful green space and you had no visual, very little visual uh, and physical connection to it. So that was one of the goals of the project. Um, besides just the bedrooms, um, needing another bedroom, they, you know, needing some flexible space, which became apparent in this last year um, of, of COVID craziness and homeschooling and all of that, the need for separate spaces and places for people to go away to and get um, temporary, get uh, some bit of privacy um, was really uh, we found, all of us found uh, to be really necessary and apparent in our current lives. And, you know, so then there was also the concern about um, doing a second floor. We decided, you know, it does make sense to go up rather than out, even though there's all this space to expand outward. And a lot of people, um, this is the choice that they're trying to make is, do we go up or do we go out? And when you go up, you have the challenge of, well, you're going to tower over, shade the yard, all of those things. Um, does it feel imposing? When you go, um, when you go out, you're going to lose your, your yard. And so um, the idea is, was to preserve this yard and have all this great yard space. Um, but then, and then open up some of the inside. This is a shot of the inside and a view to the backyard, um, which you can barely see. And so, um, so the decision was made to go up. I will say also that these, that the area we're in has very long skinny lots. So we were already, we already had a pretty long skinny house. And so the only way to really expand would have been to make it go back even further or to be even closer on one side to, to our neighbors. So um, we didn't have a lot of flexibility side to side on the lot. Yeah. So um, then going, um, into the sort of what we create, you know, what the design process um, involved. So the blue spaces are bedrooms and the yellow space is sort of uh, circulation space. And so what you're seeing here is a floor, floor plans, the bottom, First floor is on the bottom, second floor is on the top, and to the right is a section cut. So it's like cutting through the house across section. And um, so 
on the bottom floor plan, you can see the sort of dashed uh, lines in there. That's where the original walls were. And essentially we took one of the bedrooms, um, one of the things that people um, have it's always surprising for a lot of people is how much uh, space stairs take. And so, you know, you can see the stairs um, there take up um, a good portion of that bedroom, the original bedroom. And so one bedroom became the stairs, that orange space, and then the rest of it became um, a laundry room. That's, uh, we'll talk, mention a little later and, and the uses for that room. And then the blue space, the bedroom stayed, but we opened it to the backyard. So there's a window now, there was a closet along the back. We opened it more um, with visually to the backyard. And that bedroom um, changed in proportion and shape a little bit to allow the hallway area, that, that open area from the kitchen um, to be more wider. It almost doubled in width and then you have double doors going out to the backyard. And then upstairs, you can see the footprint of the upstairs is not quite as big as the downstairs. And that was by intention. We kept trying to shrink it back, shrink it back until it was, everything was about at the minimum size it could be to function well and to feel comfortable. And um, the idea there is that area on the left side is the backyard. And um, when, if we had taken the full um, second story all the way to the left edge to the backyard, then in the backyard, when we were looking at it, it would be, it would feel really imposing. So the, the um, concern there was to have that backyard feeling not feel like you're being, your, your house is towering over you. Um, and uh, then on the right side that the cross section, I just am showing that because um, to get the height of the whole um, addition down so that it didn't feel like this tall imposing second floor, uh, we use scissor trusses uh, on the roof. So that allows your pitched roof, your typical gable roof, but then your your ceilings inside are also vaulted and pitched. And you can see this space in there we have, and Doug will talk about this a little bit in a bit, um, we have lots of space for insulation. So um, these are called scissor trusses. Um, let's see here. Okay, and that is just a three-dimensional CAD model of um, the addition, you can see the front porch and that little, um, the area with the shakes was the original entry and that really did not change. We did have to reconstruct uh, most of the roof. And then the addition was all above. And um, and so this is just that we went through many iterations of uh, the possibilities here on the massing and looking at it and, and juggling all those things, views, windows, heights, head heights. And the idea was to keep a pitched roof to mimic the, the house um, character that was already there. Um, let's see. And then, and then Doug, you maybe want to talk about some of the construction aspects? To be. So you can kind of see a little bit of the floor plan, how that's laying out in there. Uh, what we're talking about a little earlier with the insulation is the, on the on that same picture on the outside of the wall, you can see that there's a, the trusses are of a higher uh, point there. A lot of the truss companies like to make them come to a single narrow point, And that only allows for like maybe four inches of insulation, which uh, makes a cold spot in the room. Uh, these, yes, they do cost a little more and the truss companies do say it's always more difficult to build, but it gives you a much higher R value and much more comfort to the house uh, for it. Um, also with the truss system, all weight is transferred to the outside walls and the uh, floors, uh, we had to use uh, eye joists. And so all the interior walls of the uh, current house uh, don't have any weight being transferred to them except for one point load in the stairwell area, uh, just for the stairs themselves. Uh, but this way it gives gave us the freedom to not have to sit there, try to tear apart the entire main floor of the house and then put in new foundations throughout all the basement for uh, holding up the new floor. But so everything is being transferred to the outside uh, of the house. 
Yeah, and I'm just going back to that cross section that kind of um, you can see a little bit of that where on the left and right side those walls is what's carrying the weight of all of the addition, most of the addition anyway. Um, this is uh, on the left picture here is just we're starting on the siding and the um, product we like to use uh, is uh, from Pro Proclima and uh, we find it as a really good WRB system. Uh, the other thing that was entertaining on this particular wall is uh, the the original house actually had an addition out back and they didn't line it up straight with the other house. And so when we're obviously doing a addition above everything, we want to make that as a straight wall the whole way down, which then didn't line up with the lower wall. So we had to fur out the whole original part of the house to create a straight line. Otherwise, you'd see this kind of huge curve and oddball shape of the house. Uh, but then this is, uh, with all the siding, then all the new windows on the side of the house, uh, even in the living room, um, on the main floor. So the main floor, we didn't change much of anything other than uh, windows and uh, just kind of that one, one wall in the bedroom, or reducing the bedroom in size. This is a uh, wall system. We didn't quite use every element of this, but this is a typical wall system we like to do. Uh, pointing out like the interior vapor barrier uh, is this Intello, which is a great system for helping the walls breathe. So that way, if any moisture does make it into the wall, it still allows it to actually breathe out, but it still reduces the amount of moisture that can actually get into the wall. Uh, the other thing we didn't do is the, uh, the Gutex uh, rigid insulation on the outside. But uh, these are, this is a, a typical system that we try to do for most every home uh, that we can, we can fit it in. This uh, is showing our uh, HRV system. So this is uh, an Intel, or um, uh, I'm blanking the name of it all of a sudden. Lunos. Lunos, thank you. Um, <laughs> I was going on the other product. Uh, this is a air filtration system. There's kind of like two in each room or two uh, work in a pair. And there's like four pairs for doing the whole upstairs of this house. Uh, since we're so airtight now with the system that we do, uh, the house still needs to breathe. And these allow uh, the air movement, which is as one is blowing in, uh, the other one on the other side of the room is blowing out. And about half hour later, they switch and so they moves the air back and forth through the room, creating a much better circulation and making sure that the whole room circulates evenly without just creating a single you know, stream of air. These also have a uh, MERV 16 filter system in it that this is, uh, we got the bigger filter uh, for this one. These uh, will really, really help, especially in our unfortunate climate now of more fires uh, summer during the summer, these will filter out a lot of the uh, a lot of that, uh, the part, all the particulates and that smell uh, that's coming with it, but still gives you the fresh air you need, so you don't feel the need to open the window and then breathe all that horrible air in. Uh, this uh, the solar tube uh, is in the hall. These are really nice system to give you natural light without putting in a big um, uh, skylight, because the skylights are uh, a bad energy loss uh, due to the fact that uh, you know you have a huge pane of glass on your roof, but they also uh, allow they allow for light throughout the day, even throughout the night. They'll bring in light so you can be in that hall and uh, in the middle of the night walk to your the bathrooms and still have a little bit of natural light, uh, even come from street lights or moonlight. Uh, they also do have a light that's in it that's on a switch so that you can uh, have a light that is working to uh, switch uh, this on and off uh, during the night without having your whole ceiling being, you know, solar tube, light, heat panels, all these other things that are going on with it. 
Yeah, I'm going to note here also that these, I mean, like, like Doug said, they're great for interior spaces. I've used them in bathrooms that had no windows at all. And then once we put it in, everyone kept on reaching in to turn off the light because they thought the light was on constantly. So it was great. They never turned on the light again. <laughs> so, um, but you also, because it's hard to turn them off, right? It's hard to turn the sunlight off. Um, so I would I don't recommend putting these inside a room where someone might sleep because it's like having a window you cannot close uh, very well, even though they have some with the dampers on them. But um, anyway, the, the basic ones uh, don't have that ability. And yeah, so that could be a problem for some people. And so that's why we specifically in this case put them, uh, put this one sort of out, it's, you know, out sort of in the hallway away from the, uh, a little bit away from the bedroom doors, kind of split in the in between the bathroom and the bedroom doors. Um, because it does bring in actually quite a bit of light. It looks just like a light is on. Uh, one little note on that. Uh, we did want to shift it. They wanted to use the south side of the roof for solar. And so we didn't want any of our water uh, pipe vents coming up through that side of the roof and the solar tube coming up through the south side so they could maximize uh, solar to be put on the roof. So we actually turned that within the space and the actual top part is actually coming out on the north side of the roof. Um, and the, not, the benefit of actually having it come out on the north side of the roof is uh, kind of more even light during the really super bright sunny days uh, when it faces south, they have an intense light. And then as it goes down, so you get a, a bigger variation of light if they're facing on the south roof. On the north roof, it's a little more of an even consistency. So it's not super intense at various times of day. But for this particular case, it was mainly to get them uh, to fill the entire south side of their house with solar. These are uh, the heat panels and or the heating system in there and the one is still at the wall. That's the uh, the Lunos. That's the uh, one of the pairs uh, for uh, venting the bedrooms. Uh, the infrared heat panels, the square ones on the left picture uh, are uh, the systems that we used in the bedroom and in the bathroom we did use the cove heater and the heat panels to try to kind of make uh, even uh, type of heat to balance the whole uh, room out because it is a vaulted ceiling. And we wanted to make sure that there's heat. There's also a heat panel on the, basically right above the camera in this picture. Uh, that way you have kind of an even heat throughout the bathroom. Uh, the nice thing with infrared heat systems, uh, being that they heat like the sun, they'll heat the objects in the room, keeping the room really warm uh, for a longer period of time, but they also heat up quickly. So uh, 15, 20 minutes, you can heat a room so this is the kind of system that you can uh, turn on and off quickly and only heat as you're using it uh, and in preparation for that. And also you can control each room individually. That way, whoever is in each room, they get the type of heat they want. If they want a little warmer or a little cooler, you can control uh, your heat system, which makes it uh, much more energy efficient also. Oops, sorry, <laughs> I didn't mean no to <laughs> Um, so now let's just take a peek at, you know, what's, what's the final result and let's do a little bit of before and afters comparison. So on the left, you see the original before and, um, and then on the right is what it looks like today, or at least a couple months ago. And, um, so I think Jay and Elizabeth, you actually said you had neighbors, um, walking by and, um, saying thank you, I think, for keeping the scale of the house down, right? Yeah, people consistently say thank you for making it blend in so well with the neighborhood, because um, there are a lot of little one-story houses in our neighborhood. Um, and then people also say thank you for it not being a big box, <laughs> for <laughs> maintaining the character of the original house, how well it all blends together. Right. So yeah, and we did, there was a lot of effort we put into tweaking it just right, um, making sure that, you know, how low could we make that roof? And at one point it was lower um, than sort of the generic, you know, the five foot mark. And if you do lower than that, like, you know, it's sort of mimicking the old uh, houses where you're sort of carving into the attic space. 
um, but we didn't want it quite that low. If you've ever been in those spaces, you know that it gets really like awkward, like you can't really use that space below that five foot level. So we had to play with that, you know, how, how tall to make that how short to make that. And I think where we ended up was a nice, um, a nice middle ground. You, the five feet is adequate to access things, to use that space fully. And um, we kept it down just enough. And your neighbors are always the greatest, your most honest critics. <laughs> uh, I'm looking at the backside. So remember, I showed we showed earlier this this before photo of the you know the house. There's no windows, um, you know. There's this one door, and you know, lovely backyard. There's a lot of space here, and um, now you know we added a window in that little bathroom too, and the French doors, and the window in that flex space, the um, what was the one of the bedrooms. And where that window was, uh, was where the closet was for that bedroom before. So moving that around was a big, uh, kind of a big change. Then when you look on the inside, um, that same door area, so looking towards the back, on the left, you see how it was before. And then on the right, we almost doubled the hallway size. And you can actually see into the backyard. There's much more connection there. And then um, on the left, the two uh, doors there are the two bedrooms. And on the right is now the one bedroom that the further back bedroom um, that has become a flex room. So in this last year, it's uh, served very well, I hear, <laughs> um, for and currently, you know, for the whatever, uh, homework room, office room, um, you know, sit around and read room, whatever it is. And I wanted to point out that the door here is a pocket door. And in, in this case, a pocket door, so I wouldn't recommend a pocket door for um, rooms that you're going to open and close that door a lot, because pocket doors, um, it's just not handy. It's not easy to open uh, that easily. Um, but they're great for rooms like this, where the majority of the time this is functioning like a family room or a den, you know, uh, an additional open living space. Um, and then the pocket door allows it to be closed for the occasional need for um, some privacy uh, or a guest staying overnight. Let's see. And then... I would add on this one that those double doors have been so nice because even when we're in the front of the house, like where the kitchen table is, you can look back through and there's just so much light gets gets through to us. So the difference between the single door that had just the window on the top half and these double doors with full light is really made a remarkable difference for even the front of the house. Yeah, and I want to point out for anyone who joined us um, just recent in the last few minutes, um, Jay and Elizabeth are the owners. Where they are sitting right now is in their dining room, and you can see us uh, between them right now in the camera the double doors. Mm -hmm. So, um, and before that would have been, if we were looking at them, that would have been just a dark place sort of back there. So, um, yeah, a very different character. Uh, also wanted to point out the um, the flooring that you see back here was an existing flooring. It looks so nice and new, the, the craftsmanship of piecing together um, and patching in the floor flooring um, was great. I think we used we used some of the leftover boards, right? And then um, we salvaged some from some of the places that we removed them from. Yeah, also, they managed to keep some uh from when they originally did it so they had extra pieces which was very lucky for us because this particular floor uh, nobody makes anymore uh, but so we had to go in surgically and remove exactly every board we needed moved so that we can save it and not destroy any board so it just took a little bit of time to uh, make sure everything came up perfectly uh, for the floor and then we did end up refinishing the whole floor throughout that section just to uh, give it a good even um, finish on it due to once we put it in, you couldn't just patch a single little spot of the finishing, but that whole area was then refinished for the back room. And what I yeah. thought was also clever is that you pulled out flooring from the closet in that 
office bedroom down there and put cork in there, which then gave you enough extra wood to patch, right? Yeah, there's uh, just a couple little pieces left. So if, as you know, <laughs> it was very tight and it was hard because we were hoping to find some from a supplier, just emergency, but every supplier says uh, they do not do this floor anymore. Uh, I think they've been having issues with its consistency of its, how well it's performing um, over time or something or cupping or the shrinking issues, but the manufacturers just decided to not make it anymore. Yeah, so this is um, um, kind of a, a thing to note if you're planning a remodel. Um, I mean, we specifically looked at this, you know, when you're looking at the budget, a lot of things um, can come up in, in a remodel situation and you wanna try to anticipate them as much as possible. And so we actually had point looked at, you know, we looked at when we were changing the bedroom um, and moving the wall, we realized we we're gonna have to patch. So we started calculating how many, how many boards, how many square feet can we take from this spot and then patch it in this spot, how many extra boards are there, knowing that there was a small chance that when we ripped up some, that maybe some, we'd have some breakage or something like that. And um, so there was this, you know, knowing that, you know, there's this teeny chance that we might have to replace more than we want back here, you know, that might add to the budget, but we had strategized a way to avoid it. And luckily, you know, not every plan always works, but you, you know, hope for the best, plan for the worst. And so we had braced ourselves for the fact that it might not work, but we planned and we did everything we could to make sure that, you know, we could succeed and, and we were able to, which, um, and so if you can plan for those kinds of things in a remodel, it helps you avoid some of those surprises um, for increased scope. And then this is another before and after. So before the um, the laundry, and this was another sort of, you know, it wasn't the primary uh, primary goal of the project, but it was, you know, the laundry is like this, you know, you're in the way if somebody goes in and out of the door, you're trying to do laundry, it's kind of a congestion point. Uh, there's nowhere to put, you know, dirty clothes and clean clothes and all of that. So um, having the laundry become a part of that space of the one of the bedrooms. Um, this, so on the right, you can see now a very nice open space that the laundry is within. It's also a multi-use space. So similar to that bedroom that became sort of a den and flex room, this also has multiple uses. It's, you know, you can see the food storage in there. It's pantry. Um, there's space underneath the stairs. You can sort of see on the right um, that is also storage. And there's light in there. Um, we uh, So there's, this is... Um, and it's, there's just a lots of storage. You can you can put a lot in there where there wasn't any storage before. And another look at that uh, further back. Um, I wanted to point out on this the the stairs going up. So there are different ways that you can do stairs, and um, and one of the things we uh, you know, kind of got challenged with during the design process is trying to figure out how open do you want the stairs? And so open spaces versus closed spaces in the design process, it's good to know and understand what your needs really are. Um, because in this case, we wanted it to be open, but then realizing that the stairs were going to be right next to the kitchen and bedrooms and people sleeping above and there'd be noise. Um, so trying to get that balance of open, but it's still uh, not so direct of a sound um, kind of transmission going up was what we were trying to do in that way. So in this case, we have stairs with a window there. So you can see this light coming through and then kind of open landing space above before you get to the bedroom doors. And so that kind of helps mitigate some of that. Um, let's see. And this is the top of the stairs looking down. Um, Let's see, go on. And then this is just some of the finished pictures of the uh, bedrooms. You can see um, the one large dormer here. You can see, uh, you saw the picture before of the little Lunos uh, ventilation unit on the left above that window. The other one, you can't really see it. It's on the right. Um, the right picture kind of below that little 
table desk towards that corner. And so that pair is what ventilates this room, provides the fresh air. And then another pair is in the other bedrooms, which we'll see in a moment here. So you can see this one is in the one bedroom and then there's a Lunos um, ventilator uh, above that window and then in the other bedroom across the way. So those two um, kind of speak to each other. Um, the closets here, so we were making use of the, uh, the lower space. Um, so you have part, half the closet is full height space. Half of it is the lower, more like five-ish foot space. And um, just want to point out that this, this clever um, configuration of the closet doors, this is a little bit bigger. This is the other bedroom. Um, you can, so you can see that there's two panels that open on the doors and then there's a fixed kind of triangular space above. And, um, and we were able to do this mostly, I wanna, you know, it's kudos to uh, Doug as, and his crew to being able to do a detail like this. And this goes back to that whole point of like having your team, uh, um, your building team together early um, because I, I've worked with some contractors who would not be able to do this. They would have been scratching their head. And um, in a very simple, quick conversation with Doug, like, oh, yeah, we know what we could do. We could do this. We could do this. And it kind of came together. And um, and it does require some skill and craftsmanship to be able to pull off a, a detail like this. And it's a little bit funky. Um, and But that was part of being... Um, embracing this idea of the vaulted uh, roof and ceiling and having this lower space on the edge. We knew we would have some of these um, kind of unique details to work with. Doug, you want to add anything about those doors? <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's just uh, interesting to uh, always do things like this. And every time we talk to our door supplier, I just told them to give me a standard height um, French door or width on it, and we would adjust it on site. Uh, I don't think I could actually draw this up and give them the exact numbers uh, for them to cut this the way we wanted to uh, with the vaulting of the ceiling without doing it on site. Um, it seems like the angles would always be like a tiny little bit off uh, the degree. But the nice thing is on in a French door type of uh, closet, when you open it, you know, you get full access to your closet instead of one little door on one side, one little door on the other. Yeah, so we don't have an open picture of this, but the the door at the, the closet space is all connected across. So there's not like a wall dividing them in between. Then, um, oh, and then a little note here, the, the two bedrooms. So this is the one kid's bedroom. And then this is the other kid's bedroom. They are exactly the same size, like within two square feet. And so, and that was um, something that we actually worked hard on because we wanted to make sure that the bedrooms, like, you know, in terms of sibling rivalry, that there was no, you know, one bedroom clearly bigger or better than the other. So um, there, there was a lot of effort uh, in that. And, and so the only difference really in the bedrooms, they both have the little um, funny closet. And, um, but one has this big window that you can see looking out to the backyard and the other has this big dormer window. So they both get uh, a big window with lots of light. And so that was uh, intentional. And then looking at the bathroom, um, the bathroom, this, so I just wanna point out another thing in the design process, like when you're making decisions, um, it's good to know like what the priorities are. In this case, there was intentionally not the desire to do like a, an ensuite bathroom, like the primary bedroom suite that you typically have where there's the, you know, the parents bedroom and bathroom uh, separated off and then you have a hallway bathroom. And that would have been two whole bathrooms. And instead having a family bathroom kind of conserves some resources um, and conserves on the budget, right? So two whole bathrooms is a lot more expensive than a single bathroom. And they already had another bathroom downstairs. So if they needed a little bit of overflow. So, um, so the desire here was to make a bathroom where all four of them could be in the bathroom at one time um, and, still, and still have the privacy needs, everything addressed. So you have the toilet space here with the half wall and the door and that's an obscured glass um, with a window. 
uh, uh, to get some natural light in there. And then the shower door also has obscured um, a panel and it's uh, it's just a privacy panel that's, a, you know, midway on the glass so you can see feet but you can't see you know the personal areas of the body and it's obscured enough that you can see that somebody's there but not actually see anything you can just see a silhouette so um and then there are two sinks so essentially everyone can be in the bathroom <laughs> at the same time even though that's probably not desirable um but for a busy family you know with everyone with different schedules um this is really important so there's also a window inside the shower and that lets uh, light in there as well and i don't know jay and elizabeth do you want to add anything as far as how this actually functions it functions well. I mean, there's not much to add at that point. Uh, you know, it really does. It's it's uh, it's. Uh, there's been very few points, if any points, where I feel like we haven't had access to the space we need. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. I guess um, a little detail I'll point out since I'm thinking of it is the um, the mirrors. You know, this this is instead of having you can have mirrors that are hung on the wall or you can have mirrors that are attached to the wall. In this case, the mirror frames actually. So this was um, assembled on site. It's not a pre manufactured mirror. And so we ordered trim from the cabinet company so it matches and then um, just framed it on site. And uh, let's see. I will add that we really like the light in the bathroom with, with the different windows. Um, it feels like a light, airy space and we really enjoy that. Yeah, and that was the, the reason for doing all this glass. I mean, that's a, it's frameless glass. It's uh, a bit of a splurge if you think of it budget wise, but it's also, you know, it goes back to those priorities in terms of how you're making decisions in the design. and what's important and having light was actually one of the things that was important. And so um, this, this, the glass allows that light to come through to the rest of the bathroom. Let's see, going through here is just, just going looking at the back door again, out to the backyard. And um, that is another view of the backyard, the finish um, product. And now they get to enjoy that space on the back side. Um, that is, oh, that decking is a Kebony decking. I forgot to mention that um, last earlier this morning. And um, and then that space, it's, a, it's the size of a small room. So if you think of uh, covered porches as being small rooms, you want space for furniture and people and things. Uh, so, um, you know, and again, we could have taken this across the entire back of the house but everything all the decisions in the design process was about containing things how small can they be you know what's the minimum you know that makes it work and um so and and i think that that you know anyway it it translates to budget right so you're gonna prioritize like the square footage um and where you want to um concentrate part of the budget. And then we're going to jump now to the Matterport. And whoa, let's start at the beginning here. So I'm going to jump back downstairs, sorry. <laughs> so this is now you're coming in the front door, we're looking towards the front door and the living room. And I see a question about the square footage. And yes, we ended up at about, um, that was the final square footage. The, the original house was about not even a thousand square feet. And then we added uh, roughly 700 something square feet. So looking back to the backyard. There's also um, a question in there about the solar tubes and, and how they can be used through attics. Uh, the solar tubes, yes, that's where they go. It's like you can run them through the attic and you can, those tubes, you, the kit comes with about a four foot length overall, uh, but you can get them to go 20 feet. If you have a huge attic you need to go through, you can make them go 20 feet long through the tube. Uh, it, obviously the longer the tube length, it diminishes the light a little bit, but not that much. And so you can take them uh, quite a, a good distance through an attic space, or if you wanted to just 
have it on an upper floor and take it through like a big wall corridor down to the first floor, uh, you could do that too. So I'm just gonna keep walking us through the house. The upstairs. The bedrooms all got cork flooring. Let's see here. And we're seeing a question of, about the Lunos pair. So the master bedroom got a pair on its own. And uh, then the second pair, and if you pause right here, Grace, you can see that little uh, handle on the, or that dial switch on your right. That's actually con the controller switch uh, for the Luno. So you can actually have them turn like various uh, fan speeds or completely off. But there's a second pair, one in each bedroom. And so the air is then moving continuously between the two bedrooms. So we wanted to make sure that the door cut at the bottom of the door was not too low to the floor to allow enough air movement so it can flow between the rooms if the doors are shut. Yeah, so these two, the two bedrooms, kids' bedrooms are across from each other and I'm, I'm panning back and forth to, so you can see how those Lunos pairs work. Um, and the other question on that is like the budget on those. Uh, they're much more affordable than um, a big HRV system because we don't run ducting throughout the whole house and you don't have a big, huge central unit. So each, uh, you can get a single one that does the room by itself. So it actually will go in and out simultaneously uh, for smaller rooms. Uh, but we found that these are very affordable um, for doing in homes because it doesn't require massive amount of ducting and changing of framing and pulling off stuff throughout the house to make them work. And you can add them easily to the house. They're actually a low voltage uh, unit. So the power is taken to that uh, switch that turns them on and off. And then it's just a single low voltage line that goes directly to each uh, unit to control them. So, sorry, so then do you have them in the living areas as well? And what about the bathroom and kitchen? Uh, we don't have them in the bathrooms and the kitchen is considered with the fan its own vent. Um, we only did the upstairs uh, with these, uh, partially because like the downstairs we didn't, it was a little bit more naturally vented due to um, uh, the old construction and because we weren't sealing up the old part of the house 100% on the lower level. Uh, so you don't, you can put them in a bathroom, you can use the single unit in the bathroom. Um, but a lot of times it's just considering when you have the external uh, vent in the bathroom, that's enough to uh, pull the bad air out of the bathroom. Uh, they're, we find they're more critical in actual bedrooms uh, because that's where you're sleeping all night and that's where you actually need more of the fresher air uh, throughout the time. And the rest of the living space on the main level, uh, it's because it's a big open room uh, with multiple doors and that are you're opening and closing constantly and the kitchen vent, it wasn't necessary to put on the lower level. Yeah, and I want to add that, you know, this is um, one of these things in remodels, right? You have to, you really have to uh, decide which things are you going to do and where are you going to draw the line between, um, you know, what you're going to touch on the existing house and what you're not. And so you, we prioritize the upstairs um, for the ventilation, knowing that there was already some exhaust ventilation. So you just want to remember on ventilation, um, there's kind of three main things that you want in your house in general. You want to exhaust air, stale air. You want to get in fresh air, and then you want to move air. So you want to, you know, move air around. And so um, you want to hit on all three of those. And so, yes, ideally, we would have also um, probably a pair of these units downstairs. But because we, we did not open the ceiling in the space below, we had existing uh, kitchen that we didn't want to, you know, uh, destroy in the process of remodeling. Um, you know, we were we were having to work around a lot of existing area. And so um, the choice was made that, you know, we have already exhaust covered downstairs. Um, we'll focus on the. But that is a good question. Um, so continuing here, let's see, I mentioned the cork, um, the the reflect the 
the reflected the um, radiant ceiling panel in the stair you know we put one we added one over the landing because of the window there um you know we have radiant heat and uh in all the bedrooms and we uh and there is um a ductless mini split in the in the uh living room dining room downstairs but we felt like this space because of the window could feel maybe a little chilly or something in the middle of winter so um this is sort of an, an additional piece um that we added there let's see and the nice thing is with this heat system there each room it's on its own thermostat so uh you can control each room accordingly and if it's super cold like grace was saying during the winter you can turn it on but if it's one of those that you feel you never really ever need to use it, you leave it off, it's never used, and uh, you're not ever spending any energy uh, to heat a space if it's not necessary. Um, let's see, I wanted to mention the marmoleum, the flooring here. So this originally um, was not part of the, you know, we. It, it's one of those things where we were hoping to keep it intact but as the project progressed, we realized that we were not going to be able to match the existing memorial and have a seam that made sense. So um, the decision was made, and this was during construction, um, to go ahead and replace the marmoleum. Um, I just wanted to point out, this is, we mentioned this before, the existing flooring on the right going out to the deck. And then the uh, laundry room, that's the old fur flooring. So that's like the, I think that's original to, you know, when the house was built. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, being flexible is uh, in, in terms of, you know, in a remodel um, project is, is a key thing, being open to, you know, the fact that things might come up and you might have to um, roll with it, but identifying um, which things to answer. You know, we had looked at this and it was a maybe question mark. Um, it wasn't an absolute, oh, we're going to just change it. And so we knew this was a maybe um, that was coming potentially um, on the floor. Uh, let's see, let's go ahead and go uh, wrap up here and we can take some more questions if there are. So I guess some tips on your own remodel um the the top three things there's lots of tips that we can give um but basically your team you want you want your design and build team together on board as early uh, as possible um because you're um well there are lots of reasons for that but you end up with a better product and better um better solutions and better process all the way around. I think everyone is happier all the way around. Um, and you can also play to the construction crew's uh, strengths. And like we were uh, mentioning with the closet doors, you know, a detail like that, um, you know, not every, uh, not every crew can actually pull off something like that easily without a lot of head scratching. And in this case, that was doable or, or piecing the flooring together and making that work. Um, so a lot of times um, you can you can kind of gear you know uh, your your design solutions towards you know what the strengths of that uh, team the construction team is, and then um, priorities and decision making like know how you make decisions, and um, you know the more linear you can be and less circling back the better, um, and allow uh, time for decisions to percolate. Um, and know that, you know, if you sometimes a lot of people spend time circling around in the process and it's because they'll make a very quick decision, knee jerk uh, decision and then go, oh, actually, you know, maybe, maybe let's revisit that. And that can um, take a long time. So sometimes allowing some time um, to make the decisions is good and be very clear on your priorities. Um, in this case, you know, Elizabeth and Jay, they, they went back, referenced back to that, you know, um, the, the goals at the beginning, because you can start, you know, start going, wow, okay, well, let's make this bigger. And then we could do this. And then we can do this. And you realize just because you can doesn't mean you should. And um, so going back to what, what are we trying to achieve here um, is helpful. And that keeps the scope in check. And then um, communication, you know, 
openly being able to openly communicate amongst all of your um, project team is really key. You know, being comfortable to talk about, you know, the needs in your toilet space, you know, or the, those kinds of things. Your house is a personal space. So my recommendation is always to, you know, your your project team are people that you very much you trust and you very much uh, can talk about any, any specific detail that, um, you know, it's in your personal space. Um, and then we're just calling out on the slides um, some of the uh, suppliers. Um, they also are guild members. And um, so the infrared heat, the, um, the ceiling panels and the cove heaters came from Mighty Energy. I think somebody earlier mentioned, asked the question about the manufacturer and uh, the ceiling panels are Duco Terra. Uh, but if you go to Mighty Energy's website, you'll see the, the products on there. And that cork flooring came from Green Home Solutions. Um, the marmoleum, did we get the marmoleum from there too? I don't remember. Uh, no, we did not get them. <laughs> okay, I didn't think so. Uh, done lumber, you know, supplied lumber, um, and marmoleum, just in case anyone's new to the linoleum flooring, um, I think on the Green Home Tour uh, website, the, that site page, we have a little blurb about it, but natural linoleum is different than other sheet flooring that um, often might be a vinyl based flooring. So Marmoleum is a brand um, and it's a really common uh, popular brand um, and one that I go to a lot, but it is um, generically called natural linoleum. And that basically sums it up. Unless you all, Jay, Elizabeth, you all want to add anything? I wanted to add that in the upstairs bathroom, we used, I think, Caesar stone for the countertops, um, which we really like that product for the bathroom. It's, it's been great for the counter there. Yeah, and that's a quartz um, product and it's so highly durable. I mean, it's pretty, it's almost destructo proof. It's not entirely, <laughs> I have, you can chip it, it turns out, but um, it is very, very durable. Yeah, so Jay and Elizabeth, you all have any last thoughts? And I think I, I, I think it's just a, a compliment and a thank you. I think you acknowledge the, the uh, having a good team, but also having the communication. I kind of my profession is all about process improvement and project management and stuff. Uh, and so it was fun to have uh, three teams, really, if you include us and, and the two of you, uh, all with our expertise or requirement sets working through a kind of a, a big project and coming together to a really good solution. So I, uh, I, think, I think it was it was fun working with you all and I think yeah. we did well. So thanks. Yeah, yeah well, I'd thank you, uh, Jane Elizabeth, because it was a joy to work with you uh, on this project. You're a very, very comfortable and easy people to work with on this. And <laughs> so it, uh, it, it made it enjoyable to do the whole process. <laughs> Well, thank you. It was, it's been so fun to just be back and just um, just to have the extra space and the flexibility to like, oh, which closet shall we put this thing in? <laughs> like instead of shoving everything in the one hallway or the entryway closet and our bedroom closet was the storage area. Um, it's been really lovely and just to have all the light coming in to, to the house um, has been so lovely. You can see behind us the light coming from the two back doors all the way to our kitchen table where, where we're sitting right now. Um, it's been really lovely. So. <laughs>